Welcome to the MSME Radio Network. The broadcast shows are for informational and entertainment purposes only. They are not designed to provide listeners with specific personal, medical, or counseling advice. Individuals with a medical issue should always consult their health care provider. MSME is not responsible for content of individual shows. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own. Enjoy the show. Hi there. Welcome to this, the 65th episode of A Couple Takes on MS. Hi, this is Dan Digman. And hi, it's me, Jennifer Digman. And we want to welcome you to this episode because we are at the precipice of the beginning of that which is MS Awareness Month 2019. Isn't that exciting? And this yes. is, um, this, it's like this is our month. This is the month for people with multiple sclerosis, i.e. Dan and Jennifer. Yes. Uh, for those of you who have never heard the show, or as a reminder for those who have, um, I have multiple sclerosis. I just celebrated my 19th year living with this chronic progressive disease of the central nervous system, and I continue to walk. And I am married to the love of my life for, this is, we're, we're, after 13 years, we're push, pushing 14. Pushing 14. With my lovely wife, Jennifer. And I also am living with multiple sclerosis. Dan and I met, oh good heaven, 17 years ago, almost 17 years ago at an MS function. Um, and they handed off right away and we've been together ever since. I also was living with multiple sclerosis, as I may have just said earlier, and my MS has entered my life almost, well, a little over 21 years ago, and about 16 years ago, I lost the ability to walk. I'm no longer able to. My MS was quite aggressive and progressed quite a lot, but I think I'm holding my own now. And so my disease classification is secondary progressive. Oh, that was a long story to tell you about my MS. But that's your MS. Because what we're doing then is we're talking about MS Awareness Month and a couple takes on MS, a couple, and we have different perspectives. And so different perspectives going into the... Um, MS Awareness Month and why is this important? I mean, there's a lot going on because not only is it the entire month, there's a special focus on MS Awareness Week, which is celebrated March 10th through the 16th this year, according to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Which is an awesome resource if you have recently been diagnosed or living with MS, or if you're a caregiver, spouse, Someone, a person, child, uh, parent living with that multiple sclerosis. I think W, 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 I don't even know up. if it's you just, even need to do yeah, that I was anymore. Say I'm w, w, my w. Age. Well, it, it, you could use it, but it's quicker just to go nmss.org. Yes, like National Multiple Sclerosis Society.org. And it's a really good resource. So it's a good place, and you were saying that MS Awareness Week is March 10th through the 16th, and Progressive MS Day, which is what I am living with, is, mark your calendars for March 28th, and this will be the second annual Progressive MS Day. Yes, it will. So, because we're like throwing a lot of information out, and we want to, I'm slowing things down a little. Just, I think it's really important. What is, why, why do we do this? Why, why raise awareness about multiple sclerosis? And what, and yeah, what's the, what's so special about it? Why do we want people to know? I mean, and this is, this is critical for, for us, for, for people living with multiple sclerosis. And I think, um, it was just, um, revealed by the National MS Society 
probably a couple, three weeks ago, that contrary to what has been talked about pretty much since you were diagnosed 20-some years ago, since or myself, you were diagnosed. that it originally was estimated that there were over 400,000 Americans living with multiple sclerosis, but research and gathering of numbers, they now say that there are close to a million people in the United States living with multiple sclerosis. And I think that's very important, you know, that we're not alone. I remember when I was first diagnosed and I was having trouble paying for my medication to treat my disease, and I received assistance through an orphan an orphan disease drug assistant, patient assistant program. Orphan being that there weren't a, a number of cases, it was a lesser known disease. And now 21 years later, um, nearly a million people are living with MS. And, and they're not quiet. You know, you and I are sharing our story and people share, share, and they don't keep it to themselves themselves you know we have the Americans with Disabilities Act we're a more tolerant country I don't think it's perfect but it's certainly better than it was when we were diagnosed well and I think when I was diagnosed and that would have been in wow 2000 there 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 wasn't a lot people didn't talk a lot about it and so I think that that added a lot of fear for me, in living with MS, and where do I reach out? How do I know? And I think that with, with the you know onset with the flood of that which we have with social media and and everything in the Facebook communities and Instagram and all these other apps that have these communities, it's a lot easier to find people living with MS. It's a lot easier to do to to get the knowledge that you need because I think that was the struggle when I was first diagnosed. You couldn't just, I mean, the, the computer was there, but the, 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 I don't think the websites were as comprehensive as they are and as, as user friendly. Yeah. And I think it was just a matter of hunting around, finding what was there. Right. What do you believe? Who, who do you ask? And I think now that there are a million people in the United States living with the disease and with the resources, it's a lot easier to get the information. But I think people need to see this to know this so they can talk about it so that there isn't the fear and that there is the knowledge. And I don't want to equate it to childhood. But, you know, when you were a kid and you were afraid of the boogeyman, for example, <sighs> you couldn't see it and you didn't really want to talk about it. So it was that much more scary and I think when you are diagnosed with MS, you need to talk about it. You need to find information, again, credible information, and, and talk about it and share and meet people. And that will help make it more manageable. You know, I often joke, and I'm sure plenty of other people out there, that I joke, I'm going to talk about multiple sclerosis so much that people will find a cure just to get me to shut up. They don't want to hear me talking my MS diagnosis story anymore or hear us, you know, sharing our stories. And I'm okay with that. Shut me up. Cure the disease. Or even if you can't cure the disease right now, fix some of the symptoms. But that's a conversation for another day. Sorry, Dan, I kind of... We laid this from no, MS cause, no, awareness. No, because but you're talking about just the importance of it and why it's it's so important to share your story, get the word out there. I think there's um, what's the word? There's frames. There's things you can put on your social media, on your Facebook, right. to get that out there. I think because it gets people talking, and I think one of the things here um, as we're um, on the cusp of MS Awareness Month. One of the things that's been blowing up everything on social media within the wor MS world yes. and everything else is... If, unless you live under a rock, you probably... If you've been living seen. under a rock. Yes. It's uh, with actress Selma Blair and what she pulled off at the Oscars and where she's going with it now, the um, Selma Blair, she was... Uh, really became public about her multiple sclerosis in 
2018, just last her, October. Her MS her diagnosis. MS, yes. And she's Je- an actress. You, um, you're, you're, from, you're knowledgeable. Well, I'm not that knowledgeable. I'm just older. Well, I mean, you're actually, older, but you you were cool. But, I, I uh, would gun no, rock. But I I I got to know Selma Blair in Cruel Intentions. And she was in a few other movies recently. She was in the O.J. Simpson story, and she played Kris Jenner, and she's an actress. So she was in Legally Blonde? Is she that... was in Legally Blonde? Look at you. Look at me go. go, I've, been, go. Well, I've been reading stories because she's everywhere, and this is just so incredible because at the Oscars, just on the red carpet, that she, with her MS, I mean, she was glorious, beautiful, everything, walking with a cane. Proudly strutting her stuff with a cane, sporting a beautiful dress, and she looked amazing. And I think that 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 openness, that awareness, you know, that that's good for the million of us in the United States living with MS. It's good to see a beautiful, proud person. And then she was on Good Morning America earlier this week. Robin Roberts. With Robin Roberts talking about her life. And the fact that she's living with spasmodic dysphomia, which is a condition affecting the muscles of her larynx. And so her voice is a little is a little it's affected. Like choppy, yeah. And it's not the the condition she's living with that spasmodic dysphomia is not necessarily caused by multiple sclerosis. From my understanding, I'm not a doctor, but I'm giving doing the best I can with the information. But it's not caused by the MS, but it's potentially that she has a lesion near the base of something in her brain that, that is controlling that. And so the MS is compounding this condition. And there was a really good article in Self, well, it's actually on the internet at self.com that explains the condition and just the reality that this this is kind of a muscle muscle disease or a muscle a muscle problem and much like the spasticity that I live with or a lot of us probably living with multiple sclerosis live with it's treatable through muscle relaxants through Botox and it's just really good you know that she is comfortable enough to talk when her voice sounds strained. And well, and, that, and that's what she said in her interview, that it's like she she's she's going through an exacerbation right now. She mm-hmm. just wanted to show that this is, you know, life with MS when you're having a flare-up. And I think that, you know, this is what gets people talking. But it's like the ways to show that even with the disease you still can move forward. You still can live your life. And I think that's what we try to do. I mean, we just do it. It's like, this is how we live and this is what we talk about. And Dan and I chuckle when they started. As a matter of fact, there was a story on ABC Nightly News and David Muir introduced the story with Selma Blair's brave fight. And, you know, with a million of us living with the disease, I want to say... Boy, there's a million of us Captain Americas running around the country because we're fighting, we're having a brave fight with multiple sclerosis. Well, and, and, and this is why we talk about, you know, the, 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 the hashtag MS Warriors. I mean, this is what we do. We live with it every day. And I think that was, not that David Muir, I mean, obviously it's a it's a thing that they do, a blanket statement, but just in recognition, you know, get, sending his best or their best yeah. to Selma Blair, but then recognizing all of us living with and I think that's where you know we looked at it and 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 looking at like with Selma Blair what she did and it's just like and what a what a great example but it's like that's just part and parcel for the world of MS because if I look at that on some levels her going down the the red carpet with the cane that doesn't necessarily represent me per se I, yeah, I mean, in terms of, because of my MS, it, re, it it shows multiple sclerosis. See what I mean? Or it's just like, you know, all I of a sudden. I understand because you are not using a cane. Thank God, knock wood, you have been fortunate in these 19 years that the MS, 
you 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 noticeably drag your foot when you're tired, but you've been able to continue walking without the need of an assistive device. But, but you know, with multiple sclerosis, I don't know how many times I've heard that it's like a snowflake, that no two cases of MS are alike. You know, so maybe Selma Blair is presenting with a spasmatic dysphonia, phonia, excuse me, and a, a need of a cane, and Jennifer Dickman is presenting with a wheelchair. And but, but, but then just with that, and then throw me in there, that I represent those of us with invisible illnesses. I mean, that yes. you can't see. And I, and we've had this discussion over which which is better, to be able to have the invisible illness where you can hide it from people, or if you have visible, that you just show. And I think that's what makes it so incredible. Like with you, you live it. You wear it on your you know, on, on, on your sleep, on everything. And, and that she was, and I think that's where there's the bravery that she was a, you know, because she had just come gone public well, with her she's MS been in October. relatively recently diagnosed. Yeah. And that, that she just boldly just boom, here I am because I, and, and there was, there's no shame in using assistive device no. because that's what helps you leave, live. And I think that's why I posted, you know, the thing with you, saying that you, you, you use the wheelchair, you're not confined to it, because that gives you your independence. It keeps me moving. And if I, if I think of it in a negative way, like my wheelchair confines me, I, don't, I am not grateful to have my mobility with my chair. As I imagine, Selma is grateful that she has a cane so that she can rock some cute heels on the red carpet. You know, give her the stability that multiple sclerosis has taken away. And I chuckled, and I wasn't poo-pooing what David Muir said about the brave fight. I chuckled because there are a million of us brave warriors, like you said, walking around or riding around. And I don't know if we take enough time to stop and say, yeah, we are pretty I want to say, say badass. I totally want to say badass. That, that we're getting up, that we're going on with life, that we're having children. We're working at jobs. We're maintaining households. We're exercising. We're eating well. And if we're not, that's you know may not be the best decision for us. But we're fighting this monster every single day. And so I think that, yeah, we are pretty pretty amazing warriors and you know I think that's worth recognizing in this month of MS awareness we should stop and say yeah we are pretty badass and and I think that's where obviously and and a lot of us talk that a lot of us living with multiple sclerosis it's like we don't have just a month we deal with this 365 days 12 months out of the year but this month is our our opening, our excuse, our um, blessing to be vocal, be proud, because it gives us a reason to talk about it. And, I mean, to be honest, I went to graduate school, what is that, five, year, five years ago? Mm, I please. finished my degree, and I wrote about how I'm an other you know, I am technically different than most people because I use an assistive device. I use a chair, and you know children are the most honest <laughs> things on earth. And you see a, a small child when you're in a chair, and they'll say, Mommy, what's wrong with her? Why? She's different. And so this month gives you the opportunity to reclaim your, your otherness and say, Don't be afraid of me. Yes, you can talk to me. Yes, I'm comfortable enough to speak out. And this gives you a comfortable way to to broach the subject of your difference and your other, you know, your 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 difference, like I said. And I guess that goes to MS Awareness Month. It's not just a just a oh, we're walking around MS Awareness. What can you do to raise awareness, Dan? What can you do? And, oh, you're asking me. Oh, I'm oh, totally I'm asking you because you're a champion at it. Well, I think it, you know, this obviously what's going to happen for me is I'm counting down the days to MS Awareness because 
that's when I'll launch my, my, my fundraising efforts for the MS walk. Our MS walk isn't until middle of May. Right. But I think this is a good time to start. I didn't want to start it like the fundraising in February because you really want to push hard later. So this gives me the impetus to springboard, you know, so I will put it on, on Facebook. I will send letters out in, you know, in, you know, MS Awareness Week and push it throughout the, the month of March just to increase that awareness, to tell my story, to make it, you know, because a lot of times you don't like making it about you or about me, but it's just like this is our opportunity to make it about me, to make it about you. And and so I, w I will do that. I know that, um, you know, we will do something, you know, for Progressive MS Day. I mean, we had um, things going last year where, you know, featured in a video and everything. We'll push that out for that week. I mean, just to get people... And on a smaller scale, if you... You know, if you don't participate in an, in an MS walk or bike event MS, you know, some sort of fundraising event, maybe you can get involved in fundraising for your disease. And that's very empowering, as we've talked about before, that it will make you know when a new treatment or a cure for the disease is found, you play the part in it. But if you are involved or haven't gotten involved before, this is the perfect time to get involved. But on a smaller scale, you can raise awareness just by wearing orange. Orange is the color of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Or just MS in general. That's the color we've kind of adopted to signify and show our, our numbers in, in solidarity. You know, when we go advocate in the capital of Michigan or in the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C., we all, those of us who are advocating, we wear orange to show strength in numbers. So you can do something with orange. Yeah, do something with orange. Write a letter to the editor. Write letters to your 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 legislators, your congressmen, your your local leaders. Um, you know, become an activist and do that just to raise that awareness. Because I think, you know, at one point in time, we used to go and have like the city council pass a resolution recognizing declaring March as MS Awareness Month, I think back in the day it was May, but passing it at the local level, I mean, just so that your elected officials know and see and recognize that, that multiple sclerosis is very alive, present, and vibrant in their communities. And yeah, so we're active members, we're engaged, and we play a valuable part and contribution to the community. So I think that that's important with MS awareness. And then simple little things, you know, take orange treats to church or, you know, get some orange flowers. Just something so that you can you can have something orange to talk about and to raise awareness for multiple sclerosis. So that more people are aware of the disease and that it's not something that shouldn't be talked about, like a dirty secret, that it is a disease that one million of us here in the United States are dealing dealing with and living with. And, 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 and make it, you know, and it's real. It's very real. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk, you know, fighters, warriors and stuff, but it is, it's a challenging disease. And so, you know, make people aware of the realities of but it the disease. Is, yeah, and it is manageable and it's not... I mean, it's scary, but when you get a handle on it, or if you get a handle on it, I mean, it may take some days, I think I got this guy, this MS, pretty under control, and then something silly like I can't get a fork to my mouth, and I'll go nuts and be a basket case. That's the reality of living with a chronic illness, as we've talked about before. But I think that's important during MS Awareness Month to just explain the realities of living with the disease and that it is doable. When, okay, then let me ask. So when you were diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1997, when we're talking MS Awareness, what's the one thing you wish you would have known then that would have helped put your mind at ease, that would have helped during an awareness campaign? Wow, that's a really good question. I'm a, I'm a reporter. Oh, well, yes. Um, 
I think that that's strength in numbers, that there are a million of us. And since I've been diagnosed, I have not told, I think, a single person that's not somewhat aware of the disease or maybe has a family member or a friend, someone they know living with it. And so that is, you're not alone, and I think that's important. So same question back to you. What about you? I wish I would have, you know, as far as the awareness to say, I drive home the fact that, this is not a terminal illness. Right. That 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 there is life after an MS diagnosis. I think I'd commented to somebody in like an Instagram comment today, I believe. It's just that, you know, and I've said it before, that on many levels, I don't feel like my life actually began until I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Because I think of... All of the opportunities and everything I've done since I was diagnosed. And I don't know if that's something where if you get an illness like this, you truly start living because you all of a sudden you realize that you're not going to have that lovely health forever. You appreciate your health. You appreciate the time. And I believe that MS really, that's a good point, kind of put our lives in order and know it's challenging but it did give us some structure and made it doable and I think that's the important thing to remember during this the MS awareness month that multiple sclerosis is livable and that you have a community of one million people out there reach out find people and share your story and increase MS awareness in this, I mean, all year round, but really concentrate on this March, which is uh, National MS Awareness Month. And remember then, uh, March 10th through the 16th is National MS Awareness Week. So really concentrate and make it loud and happy and um, everything. And just get the word out there. Spread the orange and spread awareness about multiple sclerosis. And you will thank yourself, and and it really will help to share your story and with your friends and your family. So let us know what you're doing for MS Awareness Month, MS Awareness Week, World or Progressive MS Day on March 28th. It's Dan and Jennifer Digman dot com or at Dan Jig on Twi- at, at Dan Jen Dig. At, on, on Twitter. Twitter. Boy, that was a mouthful. But thanks again to the MSME Radio Network for having us, and thanks to the Blue Draft Kid for composing the theme music for our program, A Couple Takes on MS. Take care.